What is up, Superman? Back here with House Lasky, the reigning champ to talk more playoff basketball. Uh, it's raining as well. I like that. Raining. raining yeah. Is it actually raining? It's drizzling. Yeah. Okay. Well, in Northwest it is, but yeah. I think it is in the East as well. Uh, speaking of raining, uh, the reigning ah. Western Conference uh, champions we're going to speak about. The Phoenix Suns, my last team remaining, uh, are up against the Dallas Mavs. I love that Luca has got to the second round. Um, uh, I think it's... Oh. I think it's the I think it's the first time. I actually wasn't shocked, but you know, trade trade did make the conference finals. If you if you want to pit them against the trade, work both ways. That's what I'm gonna say. Have you heard the latest stuff coming out of Atlanta? Oh no, <laughs> it is really bad. And um, I think I heard about it on the mismatch with Chris Vernon was talking about the report from someone for a beat writer for Atlanta. And you remember that last play? Um, to get some Miami, I think it was the, where the play was around for Trey. So during the huddle, Trey was just not looking in the huddle. He was just like in his own world while the whole team, while the coaching staff was doing out the play. And he's like, yeah, that play was meant to be just completely did the wrong thing. And just, it's really bad right now in Atlanta. I don't know what like, it, is. it seems like there's a snake in the grass because there's so many reports that come out of Atlanta. Anyway, we're not talking about people who are not in the playoffs. All right. We're going to talk about the fact that Lucas made it to the second round, which I yeah. love, that's great. I think it's the first time since 2014, like I said. Um, Luca had a big night on game one, 45, 12 and eight, wasn't enough. And the Suns cruised to victory. We spoke about it, Ed. Um, you asked me, have I got any concerns about the Suns? No, I, I'm so confident with the Suns and, and what they do. I, I really think that this series is going to be a breeze. Um, something that I have found out online is that they've actually won 10 straight against the Mavs. Yes. And Lucas played an eight of them. So it's not, it's not like it's been it's a sounds, it, It's Mavs. legit. And then you look at like what else the Suns can be dominant over. Aiton, the man just quietly goes about his business and he's such a productive big, like he's not the first option. He's not the second option. He's about, he's the third option and he's averaging 21 and 10 going in to this series, shooting 70% from the field, like really go bare numbers, uh, like percentage wise. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not, no, he's way more effective on offense. But the fact that he can do that and be so efficient and a star within his role is is so great. Um, that's, that's what I've got from the Sun side of things. I just think they're so well balanced, man. You look at their roster and they have, literally uh match up for any any type of lineup to go against yeah. any team. Um we haven't even talked about defensive player of the year candidate Mikhail Bridges. We haven't talked about Cam, Cam, finest. Cam Johnson. Yeah, fumble the bag. Cam Johnson, sick man of the year uh candidate as well. They have so many players that you look JaVale at and McGee. Like, JaVel McGee, great backup big. Um on yeah. on the Aiton thing. Maybe one of the very few positives, if Aiton does leave Phoenix, is that maybe you'll get to see what he does on his own, so to speak, team, what he can do outside of the Phoenix system. Let's see what he can do. Let's see what he can do when he's the number one or number two option and whether that will actually make his game better or uh, yeah, will he take a step forward or would it be a step back? Step where back. You... So that, that's that's interesting because obviously we know who number one, who, we know who centre one and centre two is in the league. You're like, what, what, one or two, like one A, one B, whatever. We know who the top two are. Then there's a bit of a drop off because I think in all NBA, it was Towns was centre three. Then you have some people quite rightly will say probably be Bam, but you missed a lot of time, but it could be Bam. Yeah. And then it comes Aiton and then there's some other players you could really go back. Yeah, maybe. So that, that, that might be the one interesting point. Like, okay, Aiton, let's see what you can do outside of Phoenix. No, man, it's one of those things. The grass is not greener. He's, he's got a luxury of Chris Paul, who's one of, if not the best point guard of all time. Uh, and he knows how to to put people in positions um, to win. I really want Chris Paul to win a ring. I don't know about yeah. you. I think yeah, yeah. he really I'm deserves it. I'm not a hater. Of course, I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to see him win one. That's something which is like similar to Dirk. Like when Dirk won it, I was like, yeah, man, he deserves it. Like he's he's not. I can see why people find him annoying, but he's uh, he's good. What, what do you got? What do you think about Dallas and their chances for this series? I mean, Jalen Brunson has obviously stepped up big time for them, but he he only scored thirteen points in game one. Uh, Kleber shot the ball well in game one. 
Um, but yeah, and also Dinwiddie struggled, who who was brought in midway through the season in a trade. So what do you think? I was thinking about three plays specifically. I was uh, in general in the playoffs. I was thinking about Giannis. I was thinking about Jar, and I was thinking about Luca. As three players who don't definitively have a number two option who can create their own offense at the moment. You can you can say it with Jalen Brunson, but I don't think he's an elite number two or like a top tier number two. With Memphis, with Jar, there's not really someone who can really create their own offense. Desmond Bain's a catch and shoot guy. He can't really create his own offense like that. And then on the Bucks, it was Chris Middleton, but he's away and there's no one really who can create their own offense, catch and shoot. The reason why I say them three is because I was thinking, okay, those are the three number one targets you may need to sort of neutralize. And if we're talking about Luca, what what is the strategy? Is it let him get his let him get his numbers, but no one else gets going, or is it do we shut him down and try to make the others try to make try to make the others beat us? That that, that, that tends to be sort of the conversation that's had around star players. I think between the three of them, the one difference between the three of them is that Giannis. Giannis is a factor on the defensive end. So one of the things that people say is that, okay, cool. If you are going to be the option, that's the number one option, getting buckets, getting buckets, getting buckets, challenge them on the defensive end as well. So they have to drain their energy as well. So they have to sort of, they can't just use all their energy on the offensive end. And you can't do that with Giannis. So that, but you probably could do that for Luca and Jar. And Luca, as we mentioned right now, maybe the option is to t- attack him every moment on the pick and roll, get him, get him on, on defense and try to go in about that way, tire him out. And maybe that might be the strategy going forward. And that's why I'm concerned for Dallas because I'm not sure how everyone else is going to step up. Luca can go get 40, 50, 60, but who's going to yeah. step up? He played 44 minutes, so he's obviously, the Suns are going to make him work for every possession. Um, if you relay it back to the past series, um, Utah weren't letting Luca beat them. They were very happy to, to help. And I think it's way more dangerous for the Suns. That's why I think the strategy is working um, to let Luca just go ballistic and get his numbers because, you know, yeah. three or four players going off is, is more dangerous than one. You know, the, the basketball has energy, right? Uh, I just think that it's a bit of a... That's, that's the problem with Luca, right? He's so good that you look down the lineup, like you said, and you're like, who is the second guy on that team? It was Paul Zingas, but it wasn't. <laughs> and it's now it's the second guy, a second guy who can create their own shot as well, especially in the half court. Yeah. Especially in the half court. It's Jaden Brunson. So, like, you know, hopefully he steps up, uh, went to Nova. So, huh. sort, of root, sort of rooting for him. Um, I think he's going to get a big contract. But personally, Ed, I think to close this out, I think Sons and Fort. As apparently the 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 fans were chanting as well. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think Luca could potentially get one game, mm-hmm. and you can have another hot shooting night from um, from Kleber and Cast from free, um, because they are streaky, streaky hot shooters. Um, but no, yeah, Suns are definitely winning this. But what something I want to ask you something we discussed before when we did our offline. When we did our top three teams of the West, we had two different number one and number two teams. I had the Warriors as number one team. You had the Suns as number two team, uh, number one team, sorry. And it seems like Suns are the favorite. And I was maybe going a bit against the grain. Do you still feel confident with that? Are you not worried about what the Warriors have done? Well, it looks like that's going to be a tough series for the Warriors. I still think the Warriors come out of that series with the Grizz. Uh, they're, they're more experienced, but if that is an extended series that's going to make yeah. uh, the life easier for the Suns. It could also work conversely, like they might be out of reps and practice and start the series uh, slow. But then again, the history shows that they're 7-1 seven, one, seven and one in game ones at home uh, since the bubble. So, you know, they definitely turn up and um, Monty Williams has always gone playing right. I'm very confident that the Suns will be going back to the NBA Finals. Um would love to have a Warriors-Suns matchup though, would you? I think. Yeah. Definitely. 